My name is Dean Bogg, and this is episode 16 of Neighborhoods. If you're new around these parts of town, welcome. Every week, I explore and document a different Pittsburgh neighborhood and turn the experience into a little 15-minute video that I post on YouTube. This week, I'm covering Lawrenceville, a neighborhood that's perhaps seen the most change out of any Pittsburgh neighborhood in the last 20 years. If you're watching this, Peggy, the rent's on the way. Currently, it's Pittsburgh's most popular neighborhood. Regina George is flawless. Lawrenceville is loaded with cafes, bars, coffee shops, and restaurants. As of late, a lot of the folks living here are relatively well-off and hipster. When I first started asking folks what neighborhoods they wanted me to cover, one of the top comments was, not Lawrenceville. I think people are sick of hearing about Lawrenceville, and they have a certain distaste for what it's becoming. Luxury apartments. I went to one out in Philly, and like I told people for years, like, oh, I work in a, in a nightclub, having never really been to a real one. Then I go to a real one, and I'm like, I work in a trash can <laughs> compared to this place, but it's my trash can. Like, I love it. I remember I did live down in Lawrenceville a decade ago, and I saw my apartment on an episode of Cops. <laughs> that was awesome. Why do people, why do you think some people hate on Lawrenceville? Because things that they love are gone. Plenty of places all over the city um, that for one reason or another, like, they're closed now, and people loved them. And if they're gone because they couldn't afford to have their business in Lawrenceville anymore or anything, that's not unreasonable to be mad about it. It's unreasonable to expect everything to stay the same and for there to never be any progress. Lawrenceville is divided into three sections. There's Lower, Central, and Upper. Lower Lawrenceville bleeds into the Strip District. Central Lawrenceville is located down the hill from Bloomfield. And Upper Lawrenceville sits pinched between the cemetery, the river, and Stanton Heights. It's hard to believe, but in the 90s and early 2000s, Lawrenceville was dirt cheap. That, along with a flat commute to the Strip and downtown, made it a perfect spot for people looking to get the ball rolling in Pittsburgh. A lot of people put in a lot of effort to bring Lawrenceville back to life, and it worked. Almost too well. As the neighborhood became more and more desirable, prices went up. And eventually, a lot of the longtime residents, as well as the people who made Lawrenceville so vibrant, were priced down. And today, Lawrenceville's reputation is upscale, trendy, and high-end. You know? But I had this dream last night. You know how like in your intros you're like your head's popping out of stuff and like upside down? And then it was like upside down world and I'm like, hello, I'm Bean Dog and this is like communities. <laughs> and I was like doing the whole thing as you. <laughs> Every month we take a glimpse into communities. This is John Potter. He used to run a hostel in Lawrenceville. He's known in the Pittsburgh Reddit community for always responding yes when someone asks for help whether it be helping someone fix their fence or donating one of his own kidneys. Lawrenceville's um, funny too. A lot of the stuff, like kind of the cornerstones, like Hambones has been here forever and Hambones hasn't changed. Like they renovated a little bit, but it's pretty much the same. But everything else, like from the last 10 years, I don't even recognize it. I remember like industry was a big deal. When industry was put in, everyone was freaking out. It's like, oh, this is the end of times. And <laughs> it kind of was for what it used to be. Why the end of times? Lawrenceville used to be like when I found out about it, whenever I was moving back to Pittsburgh 10 years ago, I was looking for a spot to do this hostel, and I wanted something on the bus line, I wanted something that was close to everything else, and Lawrenceville hit all the marks. It was also incredibly cheap. I mean, I had a five bedroom house for $700, right? Like, that doesn't, that doesn't make sense. And then people started noticing, I mean, myself included, that it was a cool spot, that it was cheap, and then people just started dumping money into it, and now this is why we got to where we are. I mean, we got all these half million dollar houses, is, these people want to pay to live here and I don't know, you can't really blame them. It's awesome. Like you got a cemetery park right here. You got everything you need. Just the transition, like these buildings were vacant. All of this was vacant. It was just storefront that was unused. And then now it's hippie and French. I don't even know. It's a boutique. A CBD boutique. <laughs> That's Lawrenceville now. Yep. Yep. This red door. No. no, it was this building right here. We had this back patio. Looks pretty similar outside of having trees down. Yeah, I had um, like three fourths of this building. Yeah, this is this is nostalgia. This is amazing. 
I like, especially walking back to my old spots, I have a sadness because I just had a really good time here. A lot of the hostel guests had a really good time here. But at the same time, you can't be mad because I did the same thing. Like I moved in here because it was cool and hip and then it got cooler and hipper and I wasn't cool and hip enough, you know? You donated a, a kidney? Yeah. How, what is the story behind that? This was someone also posted on Reddit and I feel like every single time I see one of these things, it's like a call to, to grow a little bit. Right? Because at the start it was, oh, I'm just going to help people in my little circle, like my neighbors and my friends and all that. And then it was like, oh, I'm going to help, you know, people in this greater community. And then it was like, oh, I'm going to help people on Reddit. And then when I saw this post of this daughter asking for a kidney for her father on Reddit, I was like, well, this is, this is a natural progression, right? I mean, and I really wasn't, I don't need both of them, so why not? Like the only reason, not the only reason, the main reason I did the hostel the way I did where people could pay what they could is because I just wanted to skirt all regulations, right? Like if I wanted to do a legit hostel, I had to do all this stuff. I didn't have the money for it, right? I had two grand and then I came up with this awesome idea. It's like, well, let's just do it as a nonprofit. People can pay whatever they want. So that was kind of the start of it. And then this amazing thing happened when I was just accidentally kind of being a good person, right? I was like, wow, this feels really cool. And then I just started doing more and more stuff. It, it happened locally here. I mean, I would have neighbors that needed stuff and I was pretty handy and I would help them. And then, I mean, it all kind of just snowballed from there. And then eventually I, it hit me and like, wow, this is my life's work. This is what I want to be doing. You know, all the haters for me say that I'm doing it for my ego. I'm like, yeah, maybe I am. Maybe I want to feel like a good person. But at the end of the day, if I do this because it makes me feel good, other people will hopefully, and I do have proof of this, other people join in because they want to feel good. And then it's this kind of snowball and now you're kind of changing the community. Butler Street is the spine of Lawrenceville. It runs through all three sections of the neighborhood, and it contains a countless number of excellent local businesses. On the river side of Butler, there are a few blocks of houses, and then a bunch of large industrial lots. On the other side of Butler are some of Pittsburgh's coziest streets. Due to the popularity of Lawrenceville, a lot of money has been put into the restoration of these homes, and they look stellar. I definitely think Lawrenceville is in the running for the best looking neighborhood. Upper Lawrenceville is home to some of Pittsburgh's best orphans. A house that's an orphan is a house that doesn't have an actual street, meaning that the only way to access the house is via the city steps. This house here is a more clear example of what I'm talking about. No street, just steps. Upper Lawrenceville is also home to Spirit, perhaps my favorite concert venue in all of Pittsburgh. The following footage is from an event I shot at Spirit for a company called Very Local, and they were nice enough to let me use this footage in the Neighborhoods episode. Very Local is a company based in Pittsburgh telling quality stories that nobody else is telling. If you like this channel, there's a good chance you'll like their work as well, so I will link it below. I'll also link the full version of the coverage from the event you're about to see. Okay. Uh, we were in Lawrenceville. Pennsylvania, which happens to be my hometown. This is where I grew up. We're at the Spirit Hall, which is where the KSWA wrestles. So tonight is our biggest show of the year, our last show of the year, KSWA Fan Fest. The KSWA is the Keystone State Wrestling Alliance, and next year in February, we're going to turn 20 years old, which is a great accomplishment. It's been a lot of hard work over a lot of years. We our Pittsburgh's premier independent wrestling organization and we're proud of that. We were proud to represent the people and the wrestlers and the organizations that came before us. I think Pittsburgh, you know, it was always a steel town. It isn't nowadays, but it still carries that mentality and that identity and uh, that I think identified with what wrestling was about. So that's why I think it's a, a unique and perfect fit for this city. In the home of the Let's get up for one of those great matches right now!
I love Lawrenceville and I think it's a great place to hang out and a great place to live, but there are a few things that drive me fucking nuts. This pair of overalls cost $248. And they're just overalls. If you're paying $248 for a pair of overalls, you're not someone who actually needs to be wearing overalls. This giant eyesore behind me is Arsenal 201. And it's one of Pittsburgh's largest luxury apartment complexes. A studio apartment here costs about $1,150. Now, in Pittsburgh, that is absurd. My rent is $365, and that's not even abnormally low. On their website, Arsenal 201 claims to preserve history in a modern, progressive way. Residents indulge in casual sophistication while enjoying what the city has to offer. This place does not preserve history in any way. It wipes it out. And living here will not help you enjoy what the city has to offer. In fact, it will do the opposite. It will isolate you and shut you off from everyone else. I have nothing against the people that live here, and I have a few friends that call this place home. But Pittsburgh is in need of affordable housing, not luxury adult dorms. There's nothing wrong with being rich, and I don't think people who have money are evil, but there are better ways to spend your money than living in these soul-sucking boxes that claim to be luxury. There's nothing luxury about them. All right. Manhattan Bridge in New York. These are going on the Manhattan Bridge. They end up uh, the ornamental pieces on the Manhattan Bridge in New York City. That is so That's cool. That's what these parts here are. That's what those parts are. And uh, uh, a lot of the other stuff that we did today is all gone. It's changed for the good. I mean, there's no doubt that a lot of what was going on here was horrible uh, for the earth and for just people in general. It's gone from a mill to a tech, and the bars have all gone from um, shot in a beer bars with smoke, you know, cigarette smoke pouring out of them to a uh, hipster type thing, you know. I don't really know how to describe it, but it's, it's a very welcome change. It's really nice down here now. I love this project. I mean, I've always loved my job, you know, working in the steel industry. It's exciting. Yeah. You know, I worked for the Mills j &L Steel. I worked on the Eliza Furnace. And uh, it's really exciting, but this in particular has been my favorite job I've ever done. The Manhattan Bridge it, project. Yeah. It's why? Because it's going on the Manhattan Bridge. <laughs> That's strictly why. And it's, you know, it's just exciting to be part of history, to tell you the truth. 